The Quad Engine H6, concept envisioned by military enthusiasts sounds promising, but when we cut through the fog of data, we find the seemingly attractive path of equipment development is actually fraught with a vast chasm between reality and idealism. Recently, the Four Engine H6, upgrade proposal featured in Carrier-Based Weapons magazine has stirred excitement among military enthusiasts. This envisioned Super H6 would extend the H6 bomber to 45 meters in length and 49 meters in wingspan, powered by four FWS-18 engines, is said to achieve an astonishing range of 14,000 kilometers with significantly increased payload capacity. This would instantly transform it from a medium bomber into a quasi-heavy strategic bomber, rivaling the performance of the U.S. Air Force's B-52H. To understand the origins of the quad-engine H-6 proposal, we must first examine the current state of the H-6 family. The current H-6 series, particularly the H-6K and H-6 invariants, has indeed undergone a series of sophisticated upgrades. Airframe structures have been reinforced, flight control systems upgraded to fly-by-wire, and the outdated WP-8 engines replaced with D-30KP turbofan engines. This significantly reduced fuel consumption, substantially increasing range and combat radius. In terms of weapon systems, the H-6K and H-6J are now capable of carrying air-launched cruise missiles, supersonic anti-ship missiles, and even air-launched hypersonic vehicles. The H-6N has further unlocked intercontinental strike potential through the introduction of aerial refueling capability, though this requires the complex coordination of a light takeoff plus aerial refueling plus long-range missile sequence. However, the fundamental limitation of the H-6 platform lies in the basic design of its prototype, the Tu-16. During the Soviet era, the Tu-16 was only required to attack targets within Europe. Its fuselage diameter was inherently insufficient to accommodate rotary weapon pylons, forcing weapons to be carried on external hardpoints, which significantly increased aerodynamic drag. This explains why, despite decades of refinement, the H-6 series has never truly matched the capabilities of large strategic bombers, like the B-52H or 295 Miz. Faced with the H-6's inherent limitations, military enthusiasts at carrier-based weapons proposed a bold solution. The four-engine Super H-6. This concept represents a radical overhaul rather than minor modifications. According to the proposal's details, the new bomber's fuselage length would increase from 34.8 meters to 45 meters, its wingspan would expand from 32.93 meters to 49 meters, and its fuselage diameter would grow to 3.2 meters. The weight figures are truly staggering. Empty weight would jump from 37.2 tons to 68 tons, while maximum takeoff weight would soar from 79 tons to 185 tons, elevating it to a near heavy bomber class with a 200 ton capacity. The power plant represents the core of this upgrade. 4 FWS-18 medium bypass ratio turbofan engines delivering a combined thrust of 54 tons. This ensures the enlarged H-6 variant achieves a maximum fuel-carrying range of 14,000 kilometers, nearly double the original model's 7,200 kilometers. Its payload capacity will undergo a qualitative leap. The enlarged fuselage diameter finally allows for the installation of rotary weapon racks. Wing pylons will also be upgraded to three twin mount racks, enabling carriage of up to 12 air-launched cruise missiles, or YJ-21 air-launched hypersonic glide vehicles. Based on these figures, this four-engine H-6 approaches the performance realm of the B-52H. The B-52H measures 48 meters in length, 56.4 meters in wingspan, with a maximum takeoff weight of 220 tons and a range of 16,000 kilometers. The quad-engine H-6 essentially represents a slightly scaled-down Chinese variant of the B-52H. Despite the quad-engine H-6's appealing design, its feasibility faces significant challenges. First, scaling up designs is far from simple. Scaling, increasing the fuselage by 10 meters, expanding the wingspan by 17 meters, and doubling the weight transcends mere modification. It essentially equates to developing an entirely new bomber. Structural strength must be recalculated, and aerodynamic layouts optimized. Otherwise, the aircraft either won't fly or risks disintegration mid-air. One observer pointedly remarked, this should never have been called an H-6 upgrade from the outset. It should be designated a new strategic bomber development project. Second, resource allocation presents a critical issue. While China's current large aircraft development capabilities are formidable, they are not yet sufficient to simultaneously advance multiple strategic bomber projects. The choice between pursuing a stealth strategic bomber program 
and reinventing the B-52H is self-evident. After all, stealth bombers represent the future of aerial warfare, whereas a large stealth bomber would face significant survivability challenges against modern advanced air defense systems. Even if we assume that a four-engine H-6 has indeed been developed, its practical value on modern and future battlefields remains questionable. From a mission perspective, China's strategic bombers could potentially undertake tasks including projecting power beyond the first and second island chains, striking U.S. bases in the third island chain, and even the Central Pacific, and conducting attacks on enemy homelands via the Arctic. Four missions within the first island chain, the existing H-6K, J-bombers are already fully capable. They can carry six anti-ship missiles, and any shortfall in payload per aircraft can be compensated for by increasing sortie rates. Four missions beyond the second island chain, the four-engine H-6's greatest weakness lies in its lack of stealth capabilities. Without escort from fifth-generation fighters like the J-20, penetrating deep into enemy territory would be tantamount to suicide. Such missions are precisely the specialty of stealth strategic bombers. As for striking powerful adversaries' homelands via trans-Arctic routes, the four-engine H-6 might theoretically accomplish this under certain conditions. However, its survivability would plummet if the enemy bolstered northern air defenses. This scenario highlights where stealth bombers and unmanned bombers operating in concert demonstrate superior effectiveness. One military observer put it bluntly, it's nearly the end of 2025, and we're reinventing the B-52H. That's like trying to bring dinosaurs back in the 21st century. It's just something military enthusiasts can entertain themselves with. In reality, two distinct approaches to upgrading the H-6 series have coexisted. On one hand, some argue the H-6 still holds improvement potential. For instance, an alternative four-engine design proposes fitting WS-18B engines to extend range to 13,000 kilometers and boost payload capacity to 30 tons. Supporters of further H-6 upgrades argue that even with the H-20's arrival, the two aircraft would complement rather than replace each other. Much like how the U.S. maintains a large fleet of B-52 bombers alongside its B-2 and B-21 fleets, refining the H-6 proves far more efficient than developing an entirely new aircraft. However, mounting evidence suggests China's aviation strategy is shifting toward more forward-looking initiatives. Satellite imagery reveals China is testing a stealth flying wing drone with a 42-meter wingspan, exceeding even the 40-meter wingspan of the U.S. Air Force's B-21. These new unmanned platforms may operate in tandem with the future H-20 stealth bomber, forming a stealth bomber plus unmanned bomber combat system. Meanwhile, Existing models like the H-6N, when paired with the CJ-20 cruise missile, range 2,500 km, or the YJ-21 hypersonic missile, range 5,000 km, can already effectively cover targets beyond the second island chain. Given that this, existing platforms plus long-range missiles, combination already meets current strategic requirements, the necessity of investing heavily in developing a large, non-stealth bomber is indeed debatable. Looking back at the four-engine H-6 concept proposed by military enthusiasts, the passion and creativity behind it deserve recognition. Just as columns like shipborne weapons remain a playground for enthusiasts to unleash their imagination. Yet, while we gaze at the stars, we must keep our feet firmly on the ground. The true breakthrough for China's aviation industry lies not in whether it can build a Chinese version of the B-52, but in breaking free from traditional thinking constraints to achieve genuine leaps in disruptive technologies like stealth, unmanned systems, and hypersonic capabilities. The skies of the future belong to those wise enough to foresee the evolution of warfare and position themselves ahead of the curve.